Is God good all the time? God with us. Isaiah 7, 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. When Adam and Eve fell into sin and the world with them, um, the Son of God himself stepped in and offered to become our Redeemer. Uh, Revelation 13, 8 speaks of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So as soon as things went wrong, the Lord had a plan right away to redeem humanity. So God is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's omnipresent everywhere at once. He's the creator of heaven and earth and everything in them. And I can imagine when it was time for Jesus to leave heaven and come to earth. I can imagine it was like when a beloved son goes away to war. And he's standing there with his backpack and all the family surrounding him. And everybody has tears in their eyes. And, and he says, I'll be back. I'll be back. And I can just imagine it being in heaven like that. Everyone surrounding him, all the angels, the Father, with tears in their eyes. And the one who would become Jesus of Nazareth saying, I'll be back. And then all of a sudden, he was gone. For the first time ever, he was gone. And he became a single, tiny, fertilized human ovum inside of Mary's womb fallopian tubes, whatever. But for the first time ever, he was now limited to a single point in space and time for us. And he went through a normal gestational period. He was born. He had physical needs for the first time ever. He needed oxygen. He couldn't just go strolling through the bottom of the ocean anymore and play with the fish. He needed food and water. He needed diapers, too. And it's not sacrilegious to say that. Because John 1.3 says, with All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. He planned and designed and created the human digestive system. And Jesus dignified the human body and made it honorable when he became a human being. He had emotional needs too, the same as any baby has. He needed to be held and cuddled. This son of God, who is now Jesus of Nazareth, he was a full human being so that he could help us who are full human beings. And he grew, he learned to walk and to talk. He went through all the stages of babyhood and childhood. He lost his baby teeth. And for a short time anyway, God with us was that sweet little boy running around with no front teeth. Maybe even had a lisp, we don't know. But uh, that was God with us. He was considered illegitimate. See, Mary had gone to uh, visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was expecting her son, John the Baptist. And she had stayed there three months. And she came back with a little bit of a baby tummy there. And... 
you know, how people talk. And Mary is considered just a symbol of purity today, female purity, but that wasn't the case back then. She was considered the opposite. And Jesus was considered illegitimate all their lives. They had to put up with that. And say mean things like, well, Joseph sure saved her bacon. You know, just nasty. And what could she say? I didn't do anything wrong. I, this is Messiah. Yeah, how many people would believe that, right? So, it was, I'm sure, it was difficult. Even the Pharisees, they made a crack about Jesus. They said, we weren't born of fornication, meaning that, and you were. How do we regard unmarried young women and their children in the church? Do we give them an attitude? Do we whisper about them? We better be careful about that. We better think very carefully how we treat them because that's the way people treated Mary and Jesus back in their day. And on Judgment Day, some so-called upstanding Christians might hear the words, I never knew you. I was a stranger and you didn't welcome me. When you whispered and shunned that girl and her child, you were doing it to me. So it's something to think about. So Jesus grew in middle childhood. You know how it's so important to belong. The Bible says that he was tempted at all points as we are, yet without sin. And this includes childhood issues, too. I remember back in grade school, following the popular girls in my class around. And uh, they brushed me off, sent me away, and it hurt. It, it did hurt. Did Jesus experience that? Did Jesus, did he want to belong to a club? Because he loved everybody. He loved the first and the last and everybody in between on the social scale. So did he want to belong to a club where the price of admission was doing something wrong? I remember our kids and I used to watch a uh, popular TV show and in it the teenage daughter she joined the basketball team but the price of really belonging and being one of the gang was that she had to steal something from a store and bring it back. Was Jesus tempted to do something wrong in order to belong? He was tempted at all points as we are, yet without sin. Probably so. And maybe... He just had to tell the kids, I can't do that. And then they would say, well, if you can't do that, then you, you're not one of us. And Jesus, child Jesus would say, well, I guess I'm not one of you because I can't do that. It's wrong. And as they turned and walked away from him, I'm sure he felt that lonely feeling in his heart because he wanted so desperately to have a relationship with every single one of us. So he grew. He reached adolescence. And those growth and maturity hormones have excruciating side effects. Did he feel them? Remember, he was tempted at all points as we are, yet without sin. 
How did he get through that without sitting? By depending on his father. You know, Jesus, as an adult, he arose a great day, a, a great deal before dawn and went out and prayed. And he poured out his heart to his father. And I'm sure that wasn't just a habit newly acquired. I'm sure that all through his life, from the moment he first learned how to pray as a small child, I'm sure that he just kept in touch with his father through prayer. And when he was going through this time of such emotional turmoil, I can imagine him just pouring out his heart to his father and saying, Father, help me. I can't do this without you. Please help me. And I'm sure that the Father said what Jesus says to us, My grace is sufficient for you. You could do all things through me who strengthens you. Through I who strengthens you. You could do all things through me. And so Jesus found the strength to get up off his knees and go on. And he did that for us. And when he reached adulthood, you know, you're trying to build a career. And Jesus was a master craftsman carpenter. He did his work perfectly, just as there was no sin in him. And he was perfect in that way. His work was also perfect. And my husband is a master craftsman. And I am very proud of him. And Jesus was a master craftsman. And, of course, he was very interested in the scriptures. And in order to be a rabbi, a an accepted rabbi, you had to be accepted by one of the respected rabbis. And I understand that there was an oral exam. The rabbi asked a question, and if one gave, gave a clever answer, then the, and the rabbi liked that answer, he would say, follow me. And supposedly, if one was not accepted by a rabbi at a certain age, then the chance would be forever gone. And did Satan try to push Jesus into becoming attached to one of the respected rabbis of the time? Did he say, your, your chance is slipping by, it's almost gone, you've got to do this now? But the thing was, Jesus did not have any earthly advantage. He was not to have any earthly advantage that was not accessible to every one of us. And since his kingdom is not of this world, he couldn't use any kind of earthly certification or advantage to save humanity. Everything had to come from God and his kingdom. So, he forego, forewent the honors of this earth. And when it was time, he went out on his own and in the strength of God, and he began teaching. And the rabbis of the time said, well, who is this? Where did he go to school? Where are his credentials? And there weren't any earthly credentials because he had something better. He came from God. And when he was finally crucified, the Bible said Jesus became sin for us. That's a shocking statement. He became sin for us. He was accounted wicked at the judgment bar of God. And when he was on the cross, he was experiencing the condemnation of those who are at the judgment bar of God and are lost. I had a dream when I was about nine years of age. I dreamed 
that the Lord returned. He was up in the sky. There was brilliant light. And I wasn't ready. I had not given my heart to him. And I, and I wouldn't for another 10 years. But I remember in this dream that I just had this feeling of sick dread. Jesus is here and, and I'm lost. And uh, Jesus had that feeling when he was on the cross. He experienced our old condemnation so that we wouldn't have to. And when we accepted him, that his, he, he has paid the penalty for us. And he would have done it only for one of us. He would have done it only for you if you had been the only sinner who ever lived. The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's Second Peter three nine. He want his wish, his goal, his desire for every one of us is that he should be God with us.